Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back to Reading Time with Miss Leah. Uh, I'm going to continue reading Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's Magic. We are on chapter three. This one's called The Tattletale Cure. I don't know if you have any tattletales at your house, somebody who liked to go, go and tell on somebody else if they did something or said something that they shouldn't have, and they go run to mommy and daddy and tell on them to try to get them into trouble. Okay, so that's what this chapter is about. Again, you can find a quiet place to sit down, maybe close your eyes if you want to, find a comfy couch or chair, uh, a pillow and a blanket, and you can just have a listen this afternoon, okay? All right, the tattletale cure. It was a cold, snowy day. Mrs. Hamilton gave the hot cocoa a little stir and then went to the kitchen window to see if the children were coming. It was 10 minutes past three and almost time for them. Mrs. Hamilton fixed a plate of sugar cookies and got out two big shiny red apples. And then just as the children rounded the corner, she poured the hot fragrant cocoa. Sounds like a nice snack when you come home from school, isn't it? Wendy and Timmy came stamping up the back porch and Mrs. Hamilton helped them off with their galoshes, brushed off some of the snow and hurried them into the nice warm kitchen. And how was school? She asked Wendy as she helped her with her coat and leggings. Wendy said, well, I hate everybody at school and everybody at school hates me. Mrs. Hamilton was shocked. Wendy was nine years old. She has nice Fat pigtails, shiny brown bangs, sparkly brown eyes, and pink cheeks. Mrs. Hamilton didn't see how anyone could hate her. She said, why, Wendy, that's dreadful, dear. Why does everyone hate you? Wendy said, I don't know. They just do, and I don't care because I hate everybody. She sat down at the kitchen table and took a bite of sugar cookie. Timmy, who was seven, was sitting on the floor taking off his leggings, and his mother said, Here, Timmy, let me help you. And Timmy said, No, thanks. I can do it myself. You want to know why everybody hates Wendy? It's because she's such an old tattletale. She tells the teacher on everybody. I hate her, too. That's not a very nice thing for a little brother to say, is it? Mrs. Hamilton said, Why, Wendy Hamilton... Do you tell on people? And Wendy said with evident pride, Uh-huh. I tell Miss Worthington every time anybody whispers or cheats or writes notes. I even told her when Jimmy Martin sucked on his paintbrush today, we're not supposed to suck our paintbrushes. We're supposed to use our fingers to make points. And she took a little sip of her cocoa and wiped her lips daintily. Wendy was very pleased with herself. Mrs. Hamilton wasn't pleased with her and she said, Wendy Hamilton, I think that's horrid, telling the teacher about a little thing like sucking a paintbrush. Timmy said, oh, she's always in there tattling. She's so busy spying and tattling, she doesn't even have time to play. Wendy said, you better be careful, Mr. Timothy Hamilton, or I'll tell mother that you haven't brushed your teeth for five nights and you spent some of your Sunday school money on candy and last night you read in, book, read in bed with a flashlight and you gave your liver to the dog last Wednesday. Timmy said, yeah, and this morning you put the rest of your toast in the silverware drawer. You spilled Spot's water and didn't wipe it up and you ate half the candy I bought with my Sunday school money. Wendy, quite red in the face, said, Oh, ba, 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 you, you old crumpet. Ba, ba, ba yourself, old dog eyes, Timmy said. And Wendy said, Mother, he calls me dog eyes all the time. He says that only dogs have brown eyes. Mrs. Hamilton said, Wendy, change your school clothes, then go in and start your practicing. Timmy, change your school clothes and then go down in the basement and put away all of Daddy's tools that you got out last night. I must say, you're both so disagreeable that I'm sorry you came home from school and spoiled my nice, peaceful afternoon. Mrs. Hamilton went up to her sewing room and closed the door. There was a nice little fire in the grate and it was very cozy in there with the radio playing softly. 
big snowflakes drifting down past the window and no sounds of quarreling from downstairs. Mrs. Hamilton was letting down the hems of Wendy's summer dresses and as she sewed, she thought about the tattling and wondered why Wendy had turned into such a horrible little prig. Tattling was a loathsome disease and she was afraid that Timmy was catching it too. While Mrs. Hamilton sewed and worried, the snow piled up in fluffy white heaps on the window sills. The coals hummed and blazed in the grate and from downstairs, downstairs came Da 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 as Wendy practiced the happy farmer. Mrs. Hamilton had just reached the stage where she was thinking, oh well, it will all straighten out. Wendy is just going through a phase. When the practicing suddenly stopped, the sewing room door was thrown open dramatically and Wendy announced, I think you should know that Timmy is just sitting on the basement stairs looking at a book and when I told him to do his work, he said, oh, go bang on the piano, dog eyes. <sighs> Mrs. Hamilton said, I didn't tell you to check up on Timmy. I told you to do your practicing. And Wendy said, if I don't see that Timmy does his work, who's going to? You just sit up here and sew with the door closed. Mrs. Hamilton said, when I need your help, Wendy, I'll ask for it. Now go downstairs and finish your practicing. And Wendy turned and flounced down the stairs. Mrs. Hamilton got up and closed the sewing room door. Again, everything was peaceful. The happy farmer was thumped out indignantly on the piano and from the basement, there was silence. This lasted exactly 10 minutes. Then the sewing room door was again thrown open to reveal both Wendy and Timmy jostling for position and tattling at the top of their lungs. She's just an old spy. He's not doing a thing but reading. Nobody likes her and that includes me. He's the one that ate all those ginger snaps last winter. If you want to know what happened to that old fountain pen that Mrs. Wentworth left here three years ago, Wendy took it to school and Marty Phillips stepped on it and... Timmy owes 13 cents on his library books and he can't find his card. He's called me dog eyes right in front of everybody at recess. She broke my kaleidoscope. He spilled ink in my desk drawer. She hit me. He teases me. Mrs. Hamilton marched them to their rooms and closed the doors. You're to be perfectly quiet and stay in your rooms until dinner time. With a sigh, she went downstairs to start dinner. She had just put the kettle on when the telephone rang. Hello, said Mrs. Hamilton. Hello, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. I've just baked some gingerbread and I wonder if Timmy and Wendy wouldn't like some. Molly O'Toole is making the tea and Kitty Wheeling is setting the table. Mrs. Hamilton said, oh, that's very kind of you, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. But Wendy and Timmy are being so naughty that I have sent them to their rooms to stay until dinner time. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What seems to be the trouble? Tattling, said Mrs. Hamilton. Wendy came home this afternoon and told me that she tells the teacher on everyone in school. She also tattles on Timmy and Timmy tattles on her. I'm really terribly distressed. I simply despise tattletales. Oh, so do I, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. But tattletaleitis is certainly a common ailment among children. Johnny said, ba, 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 and I said, boo, 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 and Johnny said, you're an old, ugh, and I said, is that so? Then you are too, and he said, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle laughed. I have listened to every kind of tattling there is. I have heard the sneaks, the teacher's pets, the crybabies, the mama's boys, the bosses, the little prissies, the whiners, every variety of tattletale, and I know that tattletales are really unhappy children. Mrs. Hamilton said, well, Wendy told me this afternoon that everybody at school hates her, but she doesn't care because she hates everybody at school. At present, that is only temporary, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, but I do think we should start the tattletale cure right away. I have some marvelous medicine, which I'll send over with Molly O'Toole on her way home. The pills look and taste just like licorice drops. 
but the effect is quite remarkable. Let me see. Today is Thursday. Better not to give the medicine to Wendy and Timmy until Friday night. Give them each a pill Friday night and another one on Saturday and call me Sunday night and let me know how things are. Oh, by the way, I wouldn't plan on having any company over the weekend. The tattletale-itis cure is rather startling. Goodbye and give my love to Wendy and Timmy. There was a little click as Mrs. Piggle Wiggle hung up the phone. Mrs. Hamilton sat and looked at the telephone for a few moments. Little black pills. Remarkable effect. I wonder what they are. I wonder what they do. At 5.30, Molly O'Toole, all frosted with snow and starry-eyed from eating hot gingerbread, rang the doorbell and handed Mrs. Hamilton a small package. A present from Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, Molly said. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said to tell Wendy and Timmy that she's baking gingerbread next Thursday and for them to be sure and be there. Mrs. Hamilton asked her to come in, but she said no. She had to go home and set the table, and she turned and skipped off into the snowy winter evening. Mrs. Hamilton went into the kitchen and undid Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's package. There was a small black box marked Cure for Tattletaleitis. Inside the box was a small black bottle, and inside the bottle were four black pills. Mrs. Hamilton examined the pills very carefully. They looked and smelled just like licorice drops, but she wasn't sure they weren't licorice drops because Mrs. Piggle Wiggle has said that they were magic and they undoubtedly were. She put the pills back in the bottle, put the bottle back in the box and put the box on the top shelf of the spice cupboard by the stove. Somehow or other, just seeing that box marked cure for tattletaleitis made her feel better. She hummed as she got dinner and she set the table and when Mr. Hamilton came home he looked so tired that she didn't mention her trouble or the af her mention her trouble of the afternoon. Instead she waited until dinner was on the table before calling the children then she pretended not to notice their tight little buttonhole mouths and flashing eyes. When Timmy put almost a half-baked potato in his mouth and Wendy started to tattle about it, Mrs. Hamilton quickly sent her to the kitchen for the pepper grinder. When Wendy gulped her milk and Timmy opened his mouth to tattle, Mrs. Hamilton said, Oh, look at poor Spotty. He's so hungry. He has tears in his eyes. And by constant maneuvering, dinner was kept tattle-free. But the next morning and afternoon, were horrible. I'm going to pause there. I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to record the next one right away. So if you want to keep listening, we'll have two straight back to back, but I'm going to pause there. So if you need to stop, need to have a little wiggle, or if you need to use the toilet, you can go do that now. And I will be right back.